Hi guys, Evan Green from Griffin Armament here, and we are going to be discussing the Superior Precision Rifle Modular Mounts today. We're going to walk you through a tutorial on how to install these, and we're also going to cover the unboxing of the product. So we've got the product here. When you open it up, you will notice that we have a nicely nested uh, EVA injection molded framework here, so your mount is very nicely protected on all four sides. Uh, you've got your ring top halves in here, the base, which has the artwork, as well as the skew information and the torque values listed. Uh, you've got your clamp, a little baggie for all your screws and fasteners, and there's a T15 Torx wrench in here. So that covers the unboxing of the product. Uh, as you noticed, there is no thread locker in this product. Uh, the 8x40 screws do not require the use of thread locker, uh, as long as you adhere to the torque values. But if you'd like to use thread locker, we recommend that you use only the blue uh, low yield uh, thread locker. So without further ado, we're going to get into the installation of the mounts themselves. Okay guys, so we've got a beautiful Leupold Mark VI in front of us. We're going to be using this for the mounting and we've got a SPRM in a cantilever format. Now, something that you need to know about the cantilever 15 MOA mounts is that the front ring is going to actually have a front, uh, an F Foxtrot engraved on it. That's gonna go on the front uh, of the cantilever body itself. And the rear ring is not gonna have any markings, okay? If you are installing a standard mount, a box mount, a zero MOA version, you are not going to have a front or rear ring. They're interchangeable uh, due to the fact that uh, there's zero MOA in that mount, okay? So, but for this one, the cantilever, we're gonna have that positional uh, front mount. So uh, first step is just gently lay your optic in the cradle here and then grab your ring. And we're gonna actually start by installing the bottom of the uh, fasteners first. And this is in order to get the appropriate ring gap. The gaps on these rings are extremely uh, repeatable due to the manufacturing precision of the manufacturing process and so the gaps if you want to have perfect gaps if you want to have extremely symmetrical gaps you're gonna to have to make sure that uh, you follow this procedure I know some guys freak out about their gaps not lining up I'm kind of that way myself uh, so if you follow this tutorial you'll be good so what we're gonna what we're gonna actually do is we're going to snug these fasteners up all the way. Uh, we're not gonna tighten them or torque them, we're just gonna snug them up so that when we go to re uh, release them, we're gonna get a perfect gap on this side. So once they're snug, just release, release them by three quarters of a revolution, each one of them, and that'll set up your gapping to be perfect when you actually go to install the offside. All right, and do that with both rings. All right, so I've properly snugged all these on the bottom, and then I've also uh, counterclockwise rotated the fasteners three quarters of a turn each to set up the ring gaps so that they will be uh, similar on both sides of the ring. So once you've snugged up the bottom rings and or the bottom fasteners on the other side, and you've counter rotated the fasteners three quarters of a rotation. That's gonna set the ring gaps up on this side perfectly. You're not gonna to need to do that on this, on this other side. So we're just gonna snug these up pretty decent so that we can get into leveling the scope, okay? So you are, both of them are snug, ring gaps are perfect. Now we're gonna go over to the rifle so that we can get the bubble level and level this scope. So after you mount this up on here, just snug down your fasteners so you have a nice rigid platform for leveling the actual optic to the firearm, or to the mount, I should say. So 
So now that you're snugly fitted with the mount, you're gonna take your bubble levels, and we're using the Wheeler levels here. Big fan of their products, to be honest. And you're gonna put one bubble level on the ring itself, the top of the ring, and then you're gonna put one bubble level on the scope, uh, on the top of the turret. And what that's, gonna, what that's gonna do is you're gonna basically just align the bubbles to be similar by rotating the scope uh, very gently. And so with the bubble levels in place and the this, this scope relatively snugged up, and which is a, basically a dry fit, we're going to just slowly and carefully twist the scope and the mount such that the bubble levels, the bubbles match up from level to level in terms of their position relational to the lines in the actual levels themselves. So that's it. Only takes a few seconds. And now we can roll into uh, re-snugging all these fasteners down before we actually torque them. So after we're done with bubble leveling, we're just gonna re-torque just re-snug all these fasteners before we go into actually setting torque. And then with our Wheeler fat wrench, uh, this is gonna be preset to 20 inch pounds. That's what, we, that's what we recommend for the scope fasteners on the rings. And for the cross bolt fasteners, we recommend 25. So after we're done setting torque on all the ring fasteners, we're going to go back to that rifle one more time, double check to make sure that our bubble levels have not moved. And they're perfect, which is great. And then what you're going to do is basically just select the, uh, the slotting position on your pickets in your rail to make sure that you have the proper eye relief, and so I would recommend dry fitting it a couple times, uh, getting a nice cheek weld, uh, checking your different shooting positions, prone, standing, etc., to make sure you have the right uh, position selected. And then from there, you're just going to torque uh, these in to 25 uh, inch pounds. And so we're going to dial this thing up from 20 to 25, and we're going to snug these down slightly, but before we actually set torque, we're going to actually load the optic forward to put all the cross bolts. So I'm actually going to push slight pressure forward to actually put all the cross bolts in contact with the Picatinny so that we do not have any loss of zero with uh, recoil and drift of the optic. So it's important that you keep a few pounds of forward pressure on the optic when you're actually snugging this into position. All right, and now with the 25 pound preset uh, Wheeler wrench, we're going to uh, do a torque pattern, uh, middle screws and then outer screws. That's what we found is the best torque pattern for, ach for achieving the best return to zero if you're gonna take this optic off and back on. And you're also obviously going to make sure that the proper slots are going to be selected if you're going to be taking it off and back on. All right, guys, so that basically covers the mounting of the Superior Precision Rifle Modular Mounts. This is a precision mounting system. And so first and foremost, I want to be clear, you do not need to lap these mounts. And, and if, in fact, if you do lap the mounts, that will void the warranty. Um, these are precisely made. The bores are controlled to two ten thousandths. Um, I think you'll be very delighted, uh, I know I was, uh, through the product development, that when you install these, run it on your gun for several years, take the ring tops off, pull the scope mount off, there will probably most likely be zero marks on your scope. Uh, the torque holding capability of these, due to the distance 
uh, of the rings is very good. They have a very high clamping on them and the accuracy of the bores. So you do not need to lap. You do not need to use any ros scope rosin or anything ridiculous like that. Um, they're, they're very well made. Uh, for, for the mounting, as long as you follow the instructions, make sure you're at 20 inch pounds on the scope ring fasteners, 25 on the cross bolt fasteners, and, and load the scope forward against the Picatinny when you go to snug your, your clamp. You're gonna find that these are uh, the most precise mounts you probably ever run. Um, so they're, they're, they're a great product, as long as you adhere to the uh, instructions. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys really love your products. Uh, the AIS, the Accessory Interface Suite products are gonna be covered in a different video. So if you wanna learn how to mount those up uh, with the best repeatability, I would recommend that you watch that video. And uh, be sure to like us, subscribe, et cetera, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Those are the primary social media platforms that we use. If you have any questions on these uh, mounts at all or any other Griffin products at all, feel free to hit up a customer service department. They're there for you guys to support you guys. And um, if you love this mount, I would appreciate it also. If you'd tell people about it, leave a review uh, wherever you purchased it, whether that was from Optics Planet, Euro Optic, uh, Griffin Armand, or any of our authorized dealers. Uh, we love seeing you know, your reviews, whether positive or negative. It, it always gives us feedback you know, to improve as a company, uh, which is our, our goal here is to make the best products that we can to make you guys happy. So thank you very much for, for following us and watching this video, and we hope you enjoy your products.